Hi. Um, okay, Buffalo 66. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't upload this on Monday. I'm sorry that I'm waiting so late. Um, I just, I just didn't have the time. I've been working non-stop. Um, I have a lot of points to cover in this. I've not written a list in ages, and I have so many things. Um, but that's fine. <coughs> Jesse, uh, you didn't like it, which is a shame. I'm really sorry. This is like one of my favourite films of all time. I think it's fantastic. Um, I've written down all the points you made, and I'm worried that I might sound kind of condescending when I'm talking about them, but I'm not trying to be. Um, I think you missed the point on a lot of things, but that's that shouldn't be. You know, you didn't enjoy it, and that's fine. Um, I think probably the thing I like most about this film is that it's kind of, it's really empty. You mentioned that, like, the characters were 2D and stuff, and that's, it's true to a certain extent. Um, the mother, especially, is entirely two-dimensional. She just hates her fucking son and loves football, and that's all. There's nothing to it. The father is a little more two-dimensional than that, in that he does, he is very clearly bipolar, um, He's very happy and he's very nice to Christina Ricci. He is a lech, admittedly, but he is he does seem at some points genuinely warm to her when like he's like, Are you sure you wanna hear this tape? Come on. And then he sings um the song which is actually sung by Vincent Gallo's actual father. Um a wonderful singer. Um <coughs> and then it shows that he is he is nice. There is like this say uh, to his character that is quite lovely and quite sweet and could be a lovely father and then immediately just snaps and shouts at Christina Ricci. And I think it's kind of for that reason. Um, I'm going to strike that off the list and to the singing dad. There we go. Um, the bathroom, the kind of running joke about the bathroom um, is introduced at the start um, simply to get him to meet Christina Ricci and then after that, I admit it is a bit strange, but it is funny. I think it's funny that it's there. It's a really strange movie in that it's not. It's kind of a tragic comedy, but it's not massively funny, and it's not incredibly tragic. It's probably leaning more towards sadness. The whole thing with Wendy Balsam and how he's afraid to be touched, but it's conveyed in a really funny manner, like the I need somebody to hold me, can you hold me? Don't touch me! That whole thing, that's funny. I like it, I think it's amusing. Um, <clears throat> it's shot in a very interesting way, um, just going into things like that. The, um, t the dinner table scene is kind of confusing, I think, the first time you watch it. It really confused me the first time you watch it. Um, and it breaks the 180 degree rule, um, which kind of explaining quickly is if there's two characters talking, um, there's a circle around those two characters. So the two characters would be there, and around those characters there's a full circle. And you should never cross 180 degrees of that. You should never like shoot them from... Right, I'm trying to convey, right? If there's two characters like that, and you shoot from this side, then you should never shoot from that side because it gets confusing and you think the characters have relocated and that there's mistakes and continuity errors, which isn't true, but it looks very confusing on film. And that and that entire scene, which is the majority of the movie, that's like the entire second act of the film, is nothing but breaking um, that rule. And it's incredibly confusing to watch. And the, the reason for that, the reason it's in the film is that it's... Um, <coughs> It's copying a Japanese director, I can't remember the name, and I've never seen the film that it's copying, but it's taken from a Japanese director, and it's used in this film to kind of like, make you kind of tense, because you don't really understand what's happening, why it keeps jittering around these four edges, and if they're in the same room or not. And it's just, it makes you feel kind of awkward, and the scene itself is very awkward. Um, touching on more of the two-dimensional characters, um, it is annoying, I will admit, and it is quite strange that Christina Ricci doesn't just run away at the start of the film. Um, but I think you kind of have to look at that simply, that she just falls in love with him. There's nothing, I admit there is, again, nothing to kind of make her fall in love with him. You can just kind of 
have to assume that she kind of suggests that there's something deeper under that. And then as soon as she gets there to the house, um, obviously Vincent Gallo's character is explained by the fact that her parents, that his parents, um, just fucking hate him. And it's kind of, she just feels kind of sorry for him and she kind of realises that he's had a hard life. Um, I've got one of my favourite lines written down here. Um, if you if you um, like make a fool of me, I will never talk to you again. Um, which is kind of showing that Vincent Gallo is kind of locked in his childhood in some aspects. That he kind of still kind of shies away from girls, and he thinks that that's a genuine threat that he will never talk to her again and stuff like that. Um, again, and the fact that he wears his underwear in the bath. Um, shows just kind of how he's like repressed and how he doesn't want to be touched and how he's afraid of women. I think throughout the entire film, I think pretty much after they leave the house, I think all of that, he is kind of falling in love with Christina Ricci, um, that he lets her go bowling with him and he wants to take the pictures. He wants to take the pictures to kind of back up the story that they're married, but it's still kind of there, that he still kind of wants it. He wants to be in her company. Um, <clears throat> he's okay with getting the room with her, and even though he doesn't want to sleep with her. Um, but I don't know, I don't think that that's him being a dick to her. You mentioned that as well. I don't think that's him being a dick, it's so that he can't, he can't physically be with her. He wants to sleep with her, he wants to have sex with her, he wants to kiss her and hold her and all that, but he just physically can't. Um, because of his upbringing and because of how he's been so neglected for all of these years. And um, you mentioned the kind of direct switch at the end as well. Um, I think the reason for that is that he's, because he's so obsessed, that he hasn't, once he came out and of, I'll start that again, once he came out of prison and he's, want, he's wanted to kill Scott Woods and he's, everything has been building up to him killing Scott Woods and then he suddenly realises that Scott Woods has kind of ruined his own life as well as well as kind of thing as he's become fat this hideous lech surrounding himself with these sleazy women in this nightclub and then it just kind of clicks and then he's able to realise that he's wasted <coughs> his life it wasn't Scott Woods that ruined his life he's ruined his own life and he's kind of ready to except Layla and that's kind of the reason for those which I don't think you can really complain about the last act of the film I think the last act of the film is solid and it's wonderful it's wonderfully shot um, after leaving you know going to Denny's and getting all of the character exposition and then going to the nightclub and having that fantastic music playing and um, the amazing bullet time sequence and stuff going to the thing, uh, the restaurant, and then having this, like, just one still image that just ends the film. I think it's wonderful. Um, I can't, I'm, I'm coming towards the end of my allotted time. Is there anything else? But yeah, he puts on the pants in the bath, and he puts on the vest when she gets in the bath. There's that as well that shows that he's kind of, that. Um, and you said that, um, to back up the point that he loves Layla, um, there's this scene where he's going to get the cup of coffee and he's like just looking for an excuse to stay. He's like, he wants Layla to say, just stay with me and don't go outside. And he's looking for that excuse. He breaks down on the phone to Goon, um, who's like his only friend. There's Sonny, who's his other friend. There's like only, yeah, like you said, there's only those two people in the world that have ever seemed to have really cared for him. Um, you see, like, what? bitch Wendy Balsam really is and how she's responsible for this kind of inward person that he's become. And it's just, I don't know, I think it's a really tragic, sad film. It's a shame that you didn't like it, but I don't know, I just, it really gets me somewhere. Um, and it's worth mentioning, I was going to mention this earlier, but um, Vincent Gallo writes, directs, edits, does the soundtrack and is the lead in this film, and it's worth noting that um, Vincent Gallo pretty much plays himself in this film. Vincent Gallo is a very 
self-centered man. Um, he only cares about himself. Um, the, he's very right-wing, which is why he hates the gay guy at the start of the film, but he's also very much proud of his penis. It's so big. All that stuff. So he's a cock in real life, and he's a cock in this film, but it's a wonderful film. If you want my opinion, I think it's fantastic. It's one of my favourite films. Um, Neil, I'd love to know what you think of it. I will see you guys whenever I see you.